can't. No one that scripture says, if the Lord give rest, who then can make trouble? No one. So what me I need is the rest that is from God. Tell your neighbor, rest from God. And in the first service, we looked at two vital keys. The key of service and the key of wisdom. You shall serve, I shall bless. Everyone that is serving is bound to enter rest. You are bound to enter rest. That's why there is need for every one of us to increase our understanding on what service can bring about. When you understand what service can bring about, you cease to struggle. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, if we read down from verse 12, he said, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God with the whole of their heart and with the whole of their soul. Look at verse 13. That whosoever will not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, or whether man or what? Woman. Look at the next verse now. And they swore unto the Lord with a loud voice, and with shouting, and with trumpet, and with cornet. Verse 15. And all Judah rejoice at this oath. So service is an oath. For they had swore with all their heart, and sought him with all their whole desire. And it was found of them. And the Lord gave them. They didn't give themselves. The Lord gave them rest round about. God will give you rest. I say God will give you rest. So if you are serving, hear me. You have a good pay master. God is a good pay master. He owes no man nothing. Anything you are due for, you must get it. You must get it. I say you must get it. I have not said to the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. You are not wasting your time serving God. But rather, you are serving and pressing your way to more rest. Rest is in level. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, if you are traveling, it's different from if you are driving bicycle. Am I saying the truth? It's different from you are uh, riding motorcycle. It's different from you are entering Kekena Pep. You know, you can enter Kekena Pep from here to Abuja. <laughs> I don't see him. People, they do him. <laughs> Kekena Pep to Abuja. You will arrive at Abuja, but the time is different. Am I saying the truth? <laughs> or you can enter bus. Now, there's one executive transport company in the south now. This heavy jeep. Executive. That one is different. It's a different kind of ride. Then to enter another level of rest now, you now fly. Before you wake up, the plane has landed. That's rest. God will give you rest. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Rest is in levels. The more you serve, the more God is moving you to graded level. Higher levels of rest. Higher level. Say with me, higher level. Amen. You must enter rest. Amen. You were not born a sofa head. Yes, Hear me again. I say you were not born a sofa head. Yes, That's why I know that God will give you rest. David prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, give me rest from trouble. For vain is the help of man. No man can help you the way God can help you. No man. Any man that you are looking up to is also limited in help. So that's why you must count on God to enter your divine rest. The second dimension of rest is wisdom. 90% of divine rest are products of wisdom. There's what we call the law of cause and effect, which we call the law of seed time and harvest. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he said, that shall he reap also. 
A farmer is never afraid of what will come out of the ground because he knows what he has put in the ground. He knows what he has put in the ground. Do you know he can be dreaming? I mean, saying, This harvest on this side will give me so, 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 and so amount of money. This harvest on this side will give me so, so, and so amount of money. Why? He knows what will come out from the harvest. Do you know why you are not at rest? You too, you know what you have done. Anytime you do the wrong thing, you get the wrong result. Anytime you make the wrong move, you enter on rest. So our rest is, pro is a product of our daily action. Daily action. Daily. Mike Mudok said, what you do daily determines what you become ultimately. So if you want to enter rest, Papa defined wisdom as knowing what to do and doing it. Knowing what to say and saying it and knowing where to go and going there. So if you have been experiencing unrest and you want to begin to experience rest, all you need to do is to change what you have been doing. Change what you have been doing. Someone wants to enter financial rest and is now fasting for 40 days. You will eat fasting. The law says, whatsoever a man soweth, that's what shall he do what? You can't plant cocoa yam and harvest banana. Is it possible? What you sow is what you will reap. Every seed produced after their kind, what are you sowing? You want to sow rest? Begin to sow in that direction. And I said again, some sisters think they can use prayer to cover marriage. You they deceive yourself. Start building your character. Character is the essential commodity for marriage. You can be a prayer giant and a, a gallant failure. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Some people want to marry good brother, responsible brother. But their character is a disaster. God no go agree. Angels will intervene for that brother. Let me tell you, your fine face cannot deceive anybody. Your character will expose you. Hear me? Character is like smoke. It can jump out. The moment it jump out, you can't catch it back. Come here. No. Start working on your character. Some people, their mouth is like scissors. They can cut you from here and cut you from here. <laughs> Please, we may be saying it now and some people are laughing. But that is what has kept many. I hope you know, the moment you want to marry, they go ask about you. Hear it? They will ask about you. They say, if not they say, one marry, my hand no deal. When they say, my hand no deal, meaning there is something wrong with you. There is something that cannot keep you in that house. They know you will scatter the house. A wise woman keepeth her home. A foolish woman scattereth it. You say, waiting. <laughs> there are some 40 year old boys. That have chosen never to be responsible. My mama say. <laughs> Scripture say, for this cause, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave. If you don't leave, you can never cleave. 
until you grow to taking decision by yourself my mama say my papa say you will never cleave you are still a bomb boy the only difference is that you don't have feeding bottle Please grow up. Tell your neighbor, grow up. Grow up. Go and find out what I'm just going to say now. People that have character problem, they have real problem. And what they do is they look for people that will solicit for them to quench the matter. But they can never tell them the real matter. Character problem. May the Lord deliver you. Amen. Your rest, 50% is in your hand. The other 50% is in the hand of God. When you do your own, God will do his own. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say amen. Public proofs of revival. Just like we are in this revival season, as a commission with massive outbreak of testimonies, it can also happen for you too. One proof that you are in a revival is that there is an unusual delight for kingdom advancement prayer. Scripture said, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall grant you your heart desire. Much more importantly, when you take delight in praying for the advancement of the church. What does it mean to pray for the advancement of the church? Now we hear testimonies being shared. Someone said, Go to church. They will pray for you. And now, after he was being prayed for, he's now the prayer man. He was the one that prayed for the son. He told the wife, Hey, my oil came with me. This boy must walk this evening. And God showed up. Now, if he was not in church and was touched, he wouldn't have gone back to repeat what he saw. I hope you know prayer is contagious. When you are in a place where prayer fire is heated up, you will not know when you begin to pray. That's why every time we are in tune with prayer, a change is taking place inside out. You will know that something is happening to you because a force called the spirit of prayer has been unleashed upon your life. No wonder a praying church is an advancing church. Every praying church must never cease to record signs and wonders. Because prayer brings the hand of God visibly upon the lives of the people. So when prayer is at work, God's hand is at work. And one major proof that God's hand is at work, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Doors opening. Barriers crashing. Things getting turned around. Things will turn around for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That man that shared his testimony pastor just told me that as he comes from a very far distance. Where? After Ayarago. Can you imagine someone coming all the way from Ayarago to this place? And now, all the forces that have been killing people in their family is the one killing them back now. Let me say to you, there's a level you grow to in prayer, you now become a spiritual terrorist. All the devils terrorizing your family, you begin to terrorize them back. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. So prayer releases a force. He said he saw himself hitting them like firewood, and as he's hitting them, they are dying. You never remain the same in a revival. 
Never. There must be 360 turn around in everything that has to do with your life. 360 turn around. Spiritually, financially, materially, family wise, turn around. But the main thing that makes it work, delight. Delight. Anything you take delight in, it is cheap for you to be committed to. Once there is delight, commitment is cheap. You don't struggle to what in what you are interested in. Anything you are interested in, you just see yourself flowing. It is working. Why? There is interest. Delight. But unfortunately, in our present day, young men and women, youths, you beg them for prayer. You beg some youths to come for prayer. <laughs> Scripture says it is good for a man to bear his yoke. His yoke, when is what? <laughs> In his youth. If as a youth you can't pray now, is it when you become oh papa? Is it when you become Papa Lolo? When all the cells in your bodies are dead? Is it when you will be able to pray? When you call for prayer, they are not interested. Call for talk show. Talk show. Talk show. Talk show. The only thing you want to hear is talk show. And you are not showing anything. Is it talk show that we move your life forward or prayer that we move your life forward? Pastor Kelly, I'm no longer interested in any talk show. If you are not interested in prayer, don't call me for any talk show. I am here to raise firemen, not talk show men. What is talk show? I didn't grow to become what I am by doing talk show. I said around heated men. Is it talk show you will impart to your children? People that are always going to talk, talk, doing talk show, they are the ones encouraging their children to watch African magic. Talk show will only help to increase your carnality. And reduce your spirituality. So be doing talk show. The day you are ready for prayer, call me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Bishop Oyedeko. Bishop Waleoke. Bishop Abue. They were the ones following Papa at their early stage of revival. Who are you following now? They are the ones that will reign with you tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Check it. The day you call for prayer, the attendance will reduce. Call talk show, there will be more than 200. How to propose to a lady and she will agree. <laughs> that day, your attendance will be more than 300. Or give a caption, how to fall in love. It's actually how to fall in lust. Am I saying the truth? Yes, that thing that is doing in your body, jege jege, jege jege, jege jege. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> He's only calling for your destruction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> hear this and hear it well. Anytime the flesh is enthroned, destruction is calling. It takes prayer to tame the flesh, it takes prayer to silence the flesh. So please, I beg you, delight. Tell your neighbor, delight. delight. <laughs> if you are not delighting now, 
what will your children copy from you? Because you will surely marry. I'm saying the truth. You will surely marry. You are running away. <laughs> I've wounded him. <laughs> Something has touched that man. He's a talk show man. <laughs> After running, I will still catch you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor delight. delight. Where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. You are only interested in what you like to hear. But for your true destiny to emerge, you need prayer. Every revival also steers an undying passion to see souls saved. How many of your friends have you prayed for, for them to be born again? How many of your friends have you prayed for? How many of your friends have been affected positively by your lifestyle? What we have is gossip friends. We don't have friends that we pray for. Some of the people that you call your friend, the only value they are adding to your life is regular gossip. Every call they make to you is the gossip. They have never asked you, how many hours did you pray today? How many friends do you have that have asked you, have you read this book? How many friends do you have? Have you started praying in tongues? All the friends you have, you don't hear. You don't hear. Every day, you don't hear. The only thing they are calling you, you don't hear. Your passion for souls is a proof of your love for God. When your passion for souls is in place, your love for God cannot die. I learned something from Dr. Paul Enche recently. He said, your passion for souls is a sign that you are out to stop the activity and the oppression of the devil. Because every unsaved soul or any man or woman that is not saved is under the bondage of the wicked. Satan is holding them tight. Some are under severe addiction. Some are under severe masturbation. Some are under evil and deadly habits. That they don't want to mention to anybody. And they still call you their friend. You have not been able to pray for them. So one proof that you are in a revival. You desire to see men changed. Desire to see souls changed. Many of you are on campus now, but you have never been able to win one soul from your class. You have never been able to pre preach to one person in your class. You are even ashamed so that they won't know that you come to Winner's Chapel. If you are ashamed of me before men, I will also be ashamed of you before my father in heaven. Jesus said so. So stand out, let men know and let God also know that you are for him. Let men know, let God also what? No. In 1992, our head of engineering, geology lecturer called me and said, the way you are taking this church thing, are you sure you will graduate? I say, sir, I will graduate as the best. Don't worry about that. I said, okay. I was the leader of my departmental fellowship from year one, year two, year three. I handed over. I was not carrying first from back. I was carrying first from front. 
born again head correct. You can't be born again and your brain is not working well. If your brain is not working well, after this service, come, let me lay hand on you. You need a touch from God. Christianity is not a call to dullness. It's a call to superiority. So, if nobody is influenced by you, the head of the Buccaneers in our third year, he said, I am tired. I said, what is it? His name is Osita. He's a pastor now in the U.S. He said, they want to kill me. Kill you for what? I didn't know that the bag he was carrying was the Buccaneer sword. He said, I want to run away. He said, this is our sword. But I want you to pray for me. I said, are you a courtist? He said, I'm the head of the Buccaneer. He said, okay, no wonder. Anytime we call for developmental fellowship, you'll be the, among those that will run away. But now he has run into my room. He came to give his life to Christ. And after giving his life to Christ, he disappeared on campus. And he traveled to the U.S. He won lottery visa. But they vowed that they will kill him that night. So I said, what will we do to this sword? He said, anything you want to do with it. So I had to call the president of our fellowship. I said, this man just gave his life to Christ now. I tell him, he wants to be free. This is his, uh, their sword. He just went and anointed it and destroyed it. I said, yeah, run away. That's how he escaped for his life. Pastor Chidi, my friend, who is now a pastor in this ministry, was also a monk. It affected him. He ended up, if it was God that turned his destiny in final year. After the final year, that was when he now got born again. He said, Tony, I regretted I didn't join you then. You better do this thing now. If not, you will still need it tomorrow. You will still need it tomorrow. You will still need it. There is no need for me, Boyoyo and Gayoyo. You need Jesus now. Let everybody know that there is Jesus in you. So if you are in this revival and you are still faking your being born again, you are born against. You, you can't fake what is genuine. You can only fake what is fake. You can't fake what is genuine. If it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it is not there. So tell yourself the truth. How many of your mates read this book? Read this book. Even the bulletin we share is enough for you to ravage your whole class. Bulletin, bulletin. I came to this ministry through bulletin. That's why my passion for writing bulletin cannot die. Pastor Adek, okay, when we were in NCCF, ESCO, was the one giving me bulletin every week. He would just drop it. I was not yet a winner member. He would give me, I would read. I would just pretend as if I didn't see it. I was just reading, reading, reading. Before you know what's happening, as I came back from youth service, I said, where is Winner's Chapel? They said, at that place. I was trekking to church. Trek. No transport money. Trekking to church. When there is a revival, you will not be afraid. A revival guarantees blessing. It's not just making you spiritual. It makes you an evidential carrier of the blessings of God. Don't hide your identity. Don't fake your identity. What is in it? Me in it for a revival. There must be something in a revival for you. Everyone that truly engages himself in a revival continues to enjoy supernatural transformation. The part of the just is like a shining light. Proverbs 4.18 
that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. What you wear three years ago, you must not be the same this year. Transformation mentally, transformation physically, transformation spiritually. Ask yourself, are you growing up or you are growing down? Paul asked the Galatian church, all Galatians, who has bewitched you? Did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? Every revival guarantees continuous transformation. Are you changing positively or you are changing negatively? One proof that you are changing positively, there is progress. Your success level is increasing. New doors are opening. Help is answering for you. You are tapping into new dimensions of grace and favor. It's a sign that you are growing. It's a sign that you are growing. So ask yourself, am I really growing? Am I improving? Is something new added to my life? If it is added, it will show. If it is not there, you need to work more for it to show. Every reviver guarantees a change, continuous change, continuous transformation, continuous increase, continuous progress. Naturally, if you are in business and you are not seeing profit, you will know. Am I saying the truth? You will know. If the business is growing, you will know. You will not only know, people will also know. The way I'm seeing this person, something is happening, is increasing. You can't be in a revival and not be experiencing all round growth. All round growth. That will be somebody's testimony. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So when a revival takes place, expect a visitation from God. A visitation. Numerically, financially, materially, family wise, all round growth. In this covenant day of divine rest, like we mentioned in the first service, rest is God's will for you. The psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside still waters, not troubled waters. God does not lead people into trouble. He only lead people into blessing. He leaded me beside still waters. Verse 3. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Look at verse 5 now. Verse 6 now. Surely goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell. In the house of the Lord forever. Surely. Surely. When the Lord be your guide, surely we follow you. He leadeth me beside still waters. Like we are made to understand, there are different dimensions of rest prepared for us. You must enter that rest too. I say you must enter that rest. Rest is in levels. But every rest you experience from God begins with your faith. Begins with your faith. If you don't believe it, you will never receive it, neither will you become it. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, 
to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proof being seen of them 40 days speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God another translation say convincing them that he is alive convincing them showing them I like you to hear this the more you believe God the more you enter rest Hebrew chapter 4 and verse 3 Hebrew chapter 4 and verse 3 Hebrew chapter 4 and verse 3 for we which have believed do enter into rest as he said say with me as he said as I have sworn in my rot if they shall enter into my rest although the works we are finished from the foundation of the world which means your rest has already been settled before now forever O oh Lord thy word is settled in heaven your rest has been settled but you enter into it by your belief So what you don't believe, you don't experience. No wonder your faith determines the limit of your rest. The just shall live by his faith. If the just shall live by his faith, your faith determines your rest. If you fail to grow your faith, you will live in unrest. The just shall live by his faith. What does he mean by the just shall live by faith? Growing your confidence. Increasing your trust in God. God cannot fail. God cannot lie. He said, by myself have I sworn, in blessing I will bless you. In, mu in multiplying I will do what? Multiply you. By myself have I sworn. God cannot lie. Scripture says it is impossible for God to lie. Now, let me take for example now. If I tell you that I will give you 100,000, will you believe me? Why? Eh? Eh? In fact, he will go and rest. Because he knows that I can do it. Now what you are looking for, can God do it? Yes. If God can do it, why are you now doubting? Do you know our rest starts with our doubt? Our unrest starts with our doubt. Every time you begin to doubt, you begin to enter unrest. No wonder, in James chapter 1, I think verse 4 or 5, he said, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He said, let that man not think he will receive anything good from the Lord. Why? He's, today is up, tomorrow is down. Today is believing, tomorrow is doubting. Today is trusting, tomorrow his faith has gone away. He said, let that man not think, oh, verse 8, from verse 7, he said, let that man not think he will receive anything good from the Lord. So you keep trust, growing your trust is your assignment. Lord, I believe you. No wonder Jesus said, if thou canst believe. He said, thou shalt see the glory of the Lord. God has no problem doing it if you can believe it. Like who are meant to understand on Friday in the Divine Appearance Part 4, every time we believe, we connect to power. The power of God is connected to what we believe, not to what we don't believe. Every time we believe, the atmosphere is changed. We change our spiritual atmosphere by what we believe. Mark 11 and verse 23. What thing soever you believe. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Look at verse 24 now. 
Therefore I say unto you, what thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe. Who are you praying to? Can he do what you are praying for? That's why he say, when ye pray, believe. That ye receive them, and ye shall do what? So if I now say, I will give you that money, you just go and rest. All you'll be waiting for is alert. Say with me, alert. Somebody will get alert today. Somebody's alert will land after this service. Believe. God told Kenneth Copeland, I've only told you to believe me for everything. I've only told you to believe me for everything. The moment you increase your belief, you increase the acts of God in your life. And the more God acts, the more rest you enjoy. So, our unrest is tied to our doubt. Stop doubting. Start believing. Some people don't even believe that they will marry this year. Do you know their problem? No brother don't come. Your problem is no brother. Your problem is that you have not believed. Their, their own is sin is believing. But faith is believing before you see. We having the same spirit of faith. We believe. Therefore, we do what? Speak. If you are waiting for when you see, before you will believe, you will never see. Let me repeat. If you are waiting for when you will see, before you will believe, you will never see. That is not faith. Scripture says we walk not by sight, but by what? If you are waiting for what you will see before you will believe, God will never show. God only shows when you believe what he says and walk with it. Secondly, the next thing that can guarantee rest, say with me, rest. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is an unbeatable covenant strategy for anyone that wants to enter any form of rest. Psalm 1 to 6 and the last verse. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, shall doubtless return. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Your seed cancels your unrest. Every time you release your seed, you are making an end of the matter. Your seed has a voice. Your sacrifice has a voice. Your sacrifice cries before the altar of God for intervention. Your sacrifice cries before the altar of God to turn around. Your sacrifice can cancel the invisible manipulation taking place in your life. Sacrifice. No wonder people that are addicted to giving sacrifice, they are enjoying rest. Now, it's amazing that what sacrifice we do, some people are saying, I will fast for 72 days. Machine. But let me shock you. What makes prayer effectual is sacrifice. If you are a good praying man and you are not given to sacrifice, you are a fake. You don't have a voice. What gives you a voice in the realm of the spirit is sacrifice. You are a fake, fake, fake. Every altar is powered by sacrifice. That's why you will finish your 40 days it will look as if you didn't start anything. Sacrifice means, Lord, I rest my matter with you. 
you are the best judge of the earth sacrifice means lord i've come to my last bus stop no one fails with you i won't forget i've not said this but i'm saying it now pastor polybiomi told me he said if you will truly go far in this thing it's normal to sacrifice he said do you know why many of your fellow winner pastors are not doing well they only like to collect nata 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 nye. nata 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 they are looking for donor 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 he said be a sacrifice pastor you will see speed and i want to tell you the truth even in your individual life if you are not giving to sacrifice you will not go far your sacrifice determines your open heaven your sacrifice determines the helpers that respond to you your sacrifice determines the opportunities that come your way so don't think that you have fasted even chorobin they, they fast guru maharaji they fast which is fast oh you don't know which is fast are you the only only one that can fast Occultic people too, they fast. But what differentiates we and them is our sacrifice. They sacrifice to their evil. We sacrifice to the Almighty. Say with me, the Almighty. So if you want to enter your rest, marital rest, family rest, career rest, be given to sacrifice. Forces can contend with your prayer, but they cannot swallow your sacrifice. I remember a woman. That's why what you people call friend, you are just mumuing yourself. Her friend was targeting her husband and went to a babalao that prepared charm for her. Since he had the opportunity to be meeting the husband, is that the moment he strike the thing, that madness will hit the woman and she will take over the house. Mumulishly, she told another of their friend. You see the connection of Mumu that they have? Mumu tell Mumu. That one now knew who she was referring to and went and told her that if you do nothing now, your marriage is gone. That look at what this person said. And she told her the amount. So she carried the same amount and went to her pastor and prayed the same month. Say with me, the same month. The, same month. the madness she prepared for her came upon her. And her own was a road show. You know what we call road show? Open madness. No, no brazy, no pants. And as she was walking on the road, she was calling the name of the person that she prepared the thing for. That was how people now knew what was doing her. Anybody doing you? I pray that your sacrifice will answer against them. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. There are sacrifices of vengeance. Sacrifice of judgment. Sacrifice of reversal. Sacrifice for open door. Any kind you want. So if you want to enter rest, it's cheap. Funny enough, you don't even know what is fighting you. But your sacrifice can arrest them. Many of us are engaged in battles we don't even know where it is coming from. But your sacrifice can answer anywhere. You will not miss it again. Amen. This mentality of I don't have, the thing never do you enough. When the thing do you enough, you will have. Say with me, I will have. You can claim now that you don't have. Funny enough, God is not looking for what he will eat from us. 
Scripture say the cattle upon a thousand hill they are mine. If I were to be hungry, I will not ask you for food. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. God is not looking for what to collect from you. So your sacrifice cures you, delivers you, bails you out. So if you want to enter divine rest, toe the line of faith and sacrifice. You can never miss it. If you didn't show, why another one? If it has not come, why another one? He that goeth for bearing precious seed to sow. He says, shall doubtless return. You must return. I say you must return. I say you must return. Rise up to your feet. From today, you don't talk doubt. You talk faith. You say what God can do. My God is making a way for me. My God is opening my door. My God is turning my story around. It's a proof that you trust God. That you believe him. That he can do it. You are going to lift up your voice right now. I say, Lord, I hand it over to you. For with you, there is rest. Lord, change my story. Lift up your voice and pray right now. There is rest with you. Lord, change my story. Give me rest. Lift up your voice. Give me rest. Jesus, give me rest. I cry out to you today. Give me rest. Let my rest manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have not said to the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. No one comes to you or cries to you and go back the same. Lift up your voice. Lord, I am taking my rest. I am taking my rest. My rest roundabout. I am taking my rest. I am taking my rest from disappointment, from lack, from failure. Lift up your voice and cry out right now. I am taking my rest. I refuse to be on the same spot. Lord, change my story. Change my story. Change my story. Put a new song in my mouth. Change my story. Put a new song in my mouth. Change my story. Put a new song in my mouth. Change my story. Cry out from the depth of your heart. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. You can't run to God and continue in unrest. Legadabo shaka do se te ida le comprate se sudia. Give me rest from trouble, Lord. I hand it over to you. For with you there is rest, Lord. Change my story. Give me rest. Lift up your voice. Cry out from the depth of your heart, Lord. I hand it over to you. For with you there is rest. Change my story and give me rest. Change my story. And give me rest. Change my story 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 and give me rest. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. Until Jesus is in your life, is in your heart. That is the beginning of rest for you. Wherever you are, you want to make it right with Jesus right now. Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me wherever you are, God bless you. Carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly. I want to pray with you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, come, quickly. Oh, you come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. you your story is changing in this service. God bless you. Come quickly. God bless you. You don't need to be ashamed. Rest is only with God. You are thy world. Help me, oh, help me, oh, you want me. Oh, you are thy world. If you are coming, come quickly. Your rest is starting today. Your rest is starting today. Yeah, money.
unto them that come unto you shall you in no wise cast out. No man comes to you and remains in unrest. They have identified you as their Lord and as their Savior. As this oil come upon them today, I decree rest on every side. Rest from trouble. Rest from frustration. Rest from disappointment. Rest from family lack. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. From today, whatever has made your heart to cry shall become a testimony. The God of Oyedeko that backs this commission establish a testimony for you in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus for them. Just all right.